if you're on, if you have your notes on page 21, um, we were talking about the, the dispensations, and I'll just walk through those real quick. If you want to know exactly what they are and how they pan out, you can go on YouTube or GodTube and just search secret keys, and all the lessons are up there. So if, if you have any review, you can always go there. A dispensation, remember, was mentioned four times. A dispensation is just a stewardship of time. And we, we discussed all that last week, so I know you missed a lot if you weren't here last week, but you have a lot of people who misconstrue dispensations and they make it something that it's not, they misapply it. And remember our first rule of Bible study, context. As with all of these rules, you have to keep it in context. You cannot take numerology and fly off into right field with it and make it say something you want it to say. You've got to keep it in the context of Scripture the direct um, application, and the overall theme of the Bible, which we'll get into that into a later rule. So every dispensation had a leading steward. That steward was given responsibility. They, they had a failure on the part of the steward. They wasted the goods. And then judgment came. And then God began a new dispensation. We see that in the Garden of Eden. We saw it with the patriarchs. We saw that with human government. We saw that with the Mosaic Law. We're going to see that with the church when the rapture happens and the tribulation starts. That's all that is, is periods of time that God dispenses truth. Another way to look at it is progressive revelation. In the Mosaic Law period, they weren't given the whole Bible yet. They only had the parts that they were given. So that's what they were responsible to. That would be a dispensation. Um, so I'm going to look at some so-called contradictions. And Whenever someone brings up what they believe to be a contradiction to you, it's always God just going to get your attention. That's all it is. It's not a true contradiction. It's just an apparent contradiction. And here's some of the more common that they use. On page 21, um, the first one is Leviticus 11, 9 to 11 seems to contradict 1 Timothy 4, 4. Now let me read Leviticus. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in all the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you. So in that passage, it looks like God says, stay away from those, in, those, those types of things. So let me get this out of the way. I'll give that to you in just a minute. But what does the passage say in, um, and I lost it here. It should be on page 22, and I can't find the 22. Okay, Leviticus 11, 11. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcass in, abomin in abomination. But what does 1 Timothy say? For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So over here in the Old Testament, we're saying stay away from these types of animals. And over here in the New Testament, it says you can eat them. Well, what's the difference here? We're in a different dispensation. That, that's it. That's, that's the answer. So don't be afraid of dispensations. You'll get a lot of preachers that get up from the pulpit and say, dispensations, poo-poo this, poo-poo that. No, no. There are a lot of people that do not explain it correctly, but dispensations are the way you understand the Bible. You can't understand the Bible without understanding your dispensations. That's what it means when it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You're dividing your dispensations to find your correct doctrine for certain periods of time. And that's why we know that we're not bound to the Mosaic Law period because right here in the church age dispensation, he says, eat it. Might not be good for you, pork and all that other stuff. And there's a reason God said stay away from it, by the way, but you're free to eat it. So understand that. These are the dispensations which defines these doctrines. Colossians 2.16 seems to contradict Exodus 28. In Colossians it says, Look, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day. So he says, you know, don't let anybody tell you what to do on those days. That's basically what he's saying. What does Exodus 28 say? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now there's a difference between the Jewish Sabbath and what we call a Sabbath. But remember, Sabbath is Saturday, period still Saturday today. It's not Sunday. 
Sunday is the day of new beginnings. It was the day of a new dispensation. It was the day that, that God chose to signify that he had changed dispensations. So what is the Sabbath for the believer? What do you think the Sabbath is for the believer? Now remember, he had to make a specific day for the Jewish nation because they were rebellious, they were stiff-necked, they didn't want to do what they are told, and he had to give them specific rules to govern what they did, or they wouldn't do it. Now we're in the age of grace, which means, what would be our Sabbath? Good way. Literally every day, because it's the day that we, we worship and we glorify God, and we do that every day of our lives. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm to signify the Sabbath when I cut my yard. I'm to signify the Sabbath when I do the dishes. I'm to signify the Sabbath when I'm at work. I am to show this world the glory of God and His holiness and righteousness all the time because I'm in grace. I should understand what I have. And it's that freedom that I have in Christ. And I want to show it everywhere I am. And it's not bound to one specific day. I'm to, I'm to portray the Sabbath all the time. And you, so how do I know the difference? Your dispensations tell you the difference. One place it says you've got to keep this one day holy. Well, in the church age, we're to keep every day holy. We're to serve God all the time. We're not to put on our spiritual clothes on Sunday and then live like the world the rest of the day. We're to do it all of the time. So these apparent contradictions are just that, apparent. And God uses those to show a difference to teach you a lesson. Um, Galatians 2.16 seems to contradict with James 2.21. In Galatians it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But then go to James 2.21, and it says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. So it seems to be a contradiction here. But what we have to understand is, in the Old Testament dispensation, during this period of time, Abraham was justified by his works, but he was made righteous by his faith. That's what it means. See, we as Bible believers, got to, if we're really Bible believers, we've got to say, that's what it says. Now, why does it say that? And what we're so good at as Bible believers and, and why the world is losing their confidence in the church, by the way, I've been learning this in the last 10 years of being in the secular workplace, is they see this stuff and they see us twisting it to make it fit our beliefs. It says what it says and we need to say what it says. Well, in the church age dispensation, Romans through 2 Thessalonians, the books that Paul wrote because he was the apostle to the Gentiles, the church, he makes it very clear that the dispensation has now changed. It's by faith alone. It's not by works. And I'm going to give you a few in just a minute. That's one per family. So take one per family and pass it around. I tried to do the Old Testament and New Testament breakdown, but I couldn't get my computer to print out the Old Testament breakdown. But this is the New Testament breakdown. Why the New Testament books were written, preserved, not written, but preserved, in the order that they're preserved. You've got to understand, God had his hand in where these books were placed. They're not by man just put there. Yeah, they're out of chronological order, but they're out of chronological order because God wanted it that way because it tells a story. And you're going to see it here, but next week when I show you the Old Testament breakdown of why the books of the Bible were put in the way they ordered they were, you're going to see the story unfold and you're going to think, why didn't I ever see this? From Genesis to Malachi, you're going to see God's plan of redemption unfolded in just the order of the book. And then you start going, whoa. And, and then you get excited about the Bible to think that God loves us so much 